Hi, um, I've been asked by a couple of you to clarify uh, some of the items on the group project, uh, the stock project, so I want to do that right now. Uh, this is about um, how to, again, create the spreadsheet to track your stock and um, finalize your portfolio uh, to um, discover if you made money or lost money on the stock project. That's the first thing. Also, uh, to plot your graphs uh, in Yahoo Finance and uh, more importantly to plot your graph using percentages so that you can compare all of your five stocks to each other in percentages otherwise uh, the graph wouldn't work if you did dollars. Um, Alright so let's get cracking. Um, first again I'm in Yahoo Finance that's what I've recommended for everyone to use um, so let's uh, start with uh, let's start with Yahoo Finance. So let's pretend that uh, you're doing your presentation on General Electric, so I'll just hit uh, GE. And remember that there's several ways of looking at this. Uh, one of the recommendations that I have to make your life easy, uh, especially if you, if you, you know, uh, haven't really tracked everything, is first remember that every day you're supposed to track and make sure that you check for news, and it'll tell you a specific news-related item uh, that are relevant to that day's uh, trading. So that's the first thing I want to tell you. Second thing is to look at, at the history, right? So historical data right here. And this is great because it's just going to make it really easy for you to copy and paste what you need to copy and paste for the project. Um, and so uh, you can select time period over here and start date. Uh, go back to when uh, you were supposed to buy the stock. Top of my head, I don't remember but let's pretend it's uh, August 1st, right? So 8-1-2019, here we go, and pretend that you're selling it today. So apply here, and uh, now what you have is you have, uh, starting from August 1st until today, all of that stock information. Once you've done that, uh, download the data is probably the fastest way to go. And it'll automatically uh, download the format for an Excel spreadsheet, then open that. Once you've opened that, you'll have to just only keep what you need, really. And so here are the dates. I need that. I don't need uh, really any of that information here. Um, I, I always kind of recommend using adjusted close just to be more, uh, to be a little bit safer and you get more specific data. So get rid of all that stuff here. There we go. Uh, the volume, we don't need that at all, so let's get rid of that. So we have the date and we have the close, so that's that's where we are now. Notice we're starting on August 1st all the way down till present, ti uh, present time. Um, I don't, you know, uh, we said uh, you had uh, $100,000 per stock, $20,000 uh, uh, for, for each of, of the companies, right? So let's see. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm dividing 20,000 uh, by the purchasing price, right? To find out how many shares I can buy. So divide by uh, 10.07. 10.07 equals. So that's looking like about, uh, yep, 1,986 shares. So we're going to. Again, it's because the shares are so cheap that I, I have that many. You probably won't have that many shares. 1,986 shares. There we go. So throughout this entire ordeal, I'll have, that's how many shares I have uh, purchased. So here I'll do shares. Let's see. Uh, double click on that here, and it'll just populate all the way down. Now all I need to do here is, is multiply shares by... Uh, by the price of the of the stock. So, um, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, with Excel, uh, the easiest way is equal sum. You always start with that. Open your parentheses, and then after that, just click on what you need to click. So, I'm going to multiply this by this, and here we go. That's how many shares I have. Uh, now, once I've done that, then I can also double click and notice it'll automatically populate all the way down. Once I've done that, let's uh, kind of uh, round things up a little bit. Here we go. So that's now my um, profit and loss per uh, per share. 
notice I was just on the twenty thousand dollars. I had a little bit of leftover when I started this whole thing. Oops, wrong one. And so now uh, here I am at uh, let's find out. So nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety-seven at opening. I made a little bit of money. So what you want to do here uh, is uh, subtract just a simple subtraction. Uh, in this case, you made money. So you know obviously if you have a negative sign, that's what you've lost. And so what we'll do is I'll just kind of put my little uh, splitter here. There we go. Now I know that's my total. And um, again, uh, I, I can equal sum right here. I'm going to take that number minus the opening number. And here we go. Uh, in this case, you made a profit of 2385 uh, dollars uh, for that stock. So what you'd want to do now is um, you would, you know, what I recommend you click on a little plus sign right there, and then the other company that you'll have, I don't know, Amazon, uh, you would want to do the same thing here, right? So you're going to do this for all five companies, and then uh, let's uh, let's just pretend that uh, you know, just for the sake of demonstration, I have a different company here with a different total. All I did is copy GE, and, but it's okay. It's just to kind of show you what's an easy way of uh, totaling everything up. What I would want to do here is uh, portfolio total uh, profit or total loss, depending on what your group has done. So here again, uh, equal sum, open parenthesis. This one's pretty straightforward. I click on the tab that I want to click on, I then click on that total, I hit plus sign, and then I go to the second one and I do the same thing again. So I go here, and there's my plus sign. So I would do this for all five, right? Uh, when I'm done, I would have you know my formula with all five. I'm going to close that parenthesis, obviously I only have two here, and there's my total. So here you would have your number for the portfolio investment gain or loss, right? Uh, and uh, and that would be that. So that's for the uh, Excel spreadsheet part. For those of you who are not familiar with Excel, I strongly encourage you uh, to take one of the classes that we offer on Excel. If you're a business major, this is going to really change your life for the better. Um, people who have, who understand Excel are save a lot of time. Uh, and then also, you the more you learn, the more you realize that uh, there are so many things you can do with it that will make you. Uh, put you know help you stay ahead of the game. All right, so having said that, let's now go back to our uh, Yahoo Finance. Here, I'll just go back here, and what I'm going to do now is try to plot for these things. In fact, sorry, I'm going back and forth. Let's just go back to where I was with GE. Perfect. So I'm going to summary over here, and here we go. And notice summary. I get my chart, and so I'm going to click on full screen on this one here. All right, uh, the way that I would have done this is I would have had my chart go from, uh, you know, again, uh, here we go from September 17th to November 22nd, right? So um, I guess this layover from a previous class. So let's just, you know, go, uh, we said what, August 1st, right? So August 1st until uh, today, December, oops, December, actually, obviously today's stocks are closed, so... 29th here we go and so we're going to narrow that down and uh, get rid of this real quick all right so this is what it would look like right general electric and notice the dates oops apologies notice the dates here going from august 1st through december i have one dividend uh, here for one penny if you see a d you can add that to um uh, add to your stock as revenue, right? So multiply whatever number that is by how many shares you have. Um, so that's the first thing I want to tell you. What we want to do here is we want to compare all of the stocks that you have, right? So um, the second one, we said G for the first one. The second one, pretend, is a Ford Motor Company. I'm going to click here. Notice what's going to happen now. Uh, what's going to happen is, oop, uh, sorry, I picked exactly the same color. That was a mistake. Uh, let's go back and let's pick uh, something else. All right, here we go. So notice that now I have percentages instead of dollar signs. That's what you want. Uh, they both start at the same amount. And uh, here you have uh, 
uh, GE uh, was uh, you know underperforming, but there was a you know a huge gain right there. You can see that bar showing uh, purchasing, and uh, finally uh, up by seven twenty three percent. So you would you would just add all the stocks that you have here. So you know a couple more indicators. I don't know TSLA for Tesla. Uh, here we go. Oops, oops, wrong. Sorry, it's not. It's comparison. TSLA. Here we go, Tesla over here. Tesla, we're gonna make it, I don't know, green for obvious reasons. Here's Tesla doing quite well. Uh, let's see, um, well, the holidays are around the corner. So how about Mattel? Let's see how these guys are doing around the holidays. Uh, here we go. Uh, oops, wow. Uh, Mattel not doing too well. Um, and then one more, we have five companies, right? So let's uh, do um, let's let's do um, Boeing. Let's see how they've been doing. And let's try to. It, I, I'm trying to like differentiate a little bit so it's easier to see. There's Boeing already, right right here, right. So now that I've done that, notice I only have one company with dividends, still GE. Uh, no other dividends here. So that's that's the only cash I'm getting is from there. Now. You're comparing, you're comparing five companies to each other, right? What you want to do is compare them to a benchmark. And probably, you know, the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, these are all benchmarks. Um, let's go with the Dow. That is probably the most common one. I usually like this one to stand out a lot. So I, I would, you know, do something like this, make it really red and really kind of a thicker. So you can see how Tesla has really uh, outperformed the... The Dow, whereas uh, these are the two stocks here have underperformed, right? Uh, Mattel being the worst and Tesla being the, the best. Uh, and I, I, I would encourage you to actually compare to other matrices. So let's try the S&P 500 over here. And same thing, I, I think it's a good rule to have to just really have uh, a, you know, a color that kind of stands out, you know, and even with the line there. So there's an understanding. And, you know, in this case, the two benchmarks are really very similar. So that's it for that. Uh, next thing, you, you, the last thing you want to do once you're done with this is um, you want to download this thing, right? So you're going to click over here and you are going to click here to download it. And now you have a file that is ready for you to import into your Word document or your PowerPoint slide. I think in this case where uh, you are doing a presentation as well. but. My computer is a little bit slow. I'm doing too many things at the same time. But basically, um, when this thing is ready, you will see what the um, benchmark comparison chart looks like. Um, take your time. I know I'm trying to uh, do this in a way that will help you. Uh, but this is, as you can see, so it's a very useful way to, again, explain uh, graphically what's going on. All right. Um, good luck. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys soon.